Let's add semantic zoom support to our application. So let's go back to our main view, course list page, and let's scroll down to the main content in that page, which is defined in this grid view here that we created before. And what we'll do is insert it in a semantic zoom control. And let's call it zoom, for example. And here we'll define two different views for that semantic zoom. A zoomed in view, which is basically the normal view that we already have and a zoomed out view that we'll create from scratch. So for the zoomed in view, we'll just take this grid view and we'll move it within the uh, zoomed in view. Okay, so that takes care of the zoomed in view. Now the zoomed out view can be anything that we want. So let's say we'd like to display the list of course tracks um, in the middle of the screen here horizontally, each with each track being displayed with an icon and the track name underneath. So to do this, we'll use, say, a list view. And let me do some quick formatting here, vertical alignment to center, and I'll set a margin. Okay, now first we need to define the list views item template. And for the sake of time, I'll paste in the raw template here without the bindings, and we'll add the bindings next. So this is a simple stack panel, or a vertical stack panel with an image that will display the uh, track icon and a text block which will be uh, displaying the track name. Okay, and we want the list to be to be horizontal. So what we'll do is set the items panel property of our list view to a stack panel, a horizontal stack panel. So stack panel, orientation, horizontal, and also constrain the height um, to 150. All right, so this is our raw template. Now let's go to the code behind and we'll set the data source for the zoomed out view. And first we need to retrieve the list of groups that we'll be binding to. And we can retrieve the list of groups through the collection view source control that we've added previously. Remember, we have a collection view source control called groups view source. And we can get from that the list of tracks, that is the list of groups. Remember, our groups are actually course track items. So let's retrieve that through the groups collection view source control and then view property. And we can access the groups through the collection groups property. And now we can bind or we can set the data source of our zoomed out view to that. So we access it through the zoomed out view property here. And we can cast this as a list view, which is which it is. And then we'll set the item source property to the list of tracks. Okay. Now back in the view, we need to set the bindings. So let's navigate down to the zoomed out view again. And there are two bindings to set here. We need to set the source property of the image to the name of the file that um, represents the icon. And I've set it up so that the file name is actually the track name. So we'll be binding to the track name property. And again, for the sake of time, since I'm using a converter, I'll paste in the binding here. And notice I'm using the syntax group.trackName. Remember, our groups are course track items, uh, um, instances. So track name is one of the properties exposed by the course track class. And I, I can access this through the group uh, prefix. Now I'll do the same here for the text block. And I'll um, also bind to the track name. So binding group.trackName. All right, now we'll set, and if I run the application, I'll zoom out using the uh, control mouse wheel combination. If I were using a touch screen, then I'd be using uh, the pinch gesture. So let me do control mouse wheel, and we can see the list of tracks, uh, each with the icon and the track name underneath. Now, if I click on one of the tracks, we're back into the zoomed in view. Note that at this point, if I click on the uh, rightmost um, track, I should be panned over to the Windows Phone 7 section here, which is not happening. And it's not apparently not working in the uh, sample either. So my guess is that will be um, improved in the next release. So easy steps. We first uh, create a semantic zoom and the zoomed out and zoomed in views. Uh, we move our current view to the zoomed in view. And then we create a new zoomed out view as we want. Then we retrieve the list of groups and we set the data source of our zoomed out view to the list of groups. 
and then we set the bindings using the group prefix.